Hello, everybody. It is Dee and Renee, and we are here. Um, I am broadcasting today from Las Vegas, and um, Dee is broadcasting from, did you say Edmonton? Yeah, Edmonton area. So I'm in Leduc, just outside of Edmonton. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are jumping on right now, tell us where you're from. Give us a hashtag live. And, um, you know, it's the end of the summer. So if you love salads, I know I eat a lot of salads throughout the year, but, but the time that we love to have lighter foods and our bodies really crave those all that hydration from our veggies and all of that is during the summer and the hot months and humidity and and we're we're craving more water 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 right so um he has some amazing salads and and the salads that we're showing today are very hearty and they're also things that you can make for your entire family so these can be whole meals and um I love that because it, it's light and and it's easy. You don't have to cook anything. The house is not hot. So um, yeah, I love all of these. So Dee, tell us uh, kind of what's been going on in your neck of the woods. Obviously I'm in Las Vegas. It's hot, hot, hot here, but, but still lovely. I get to go out to the pool every morning. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, well, I just actually spent the last four days in kind of rainy, overcast, windy conditions. And yesterday the sun poked out for 20 minutes to which I actually then burnt. So go oh. figure. I had a hoodie on and where my neck peeked out, where my beak peeked out. I like, it's like I'm allergic to the sun now because we've seen so little of it. It just fried me in seconds. How rude. Wow. Wow. It's, it's already, things are already moving up there up north and, and changing. So mm -hmm. let's say hi to Sandy, uh, one of our faithful followers. She's from Pew All Up. Thank you for uh, putting that in words because I never can say it correctly in Ground Washington. And uh, she owns a clinic, an ideal protein clinic, I believe. And June loves our recipes. Um, and so uh, say, uh, so hi to everybody. And um, we got Joelle online. Hey, Joelle, give us a hashtag live. And you always know that if there is anything that you see here that you'd like the recipe to, if you're not on our weekly recipe list, be sure that you subscribe. All you have to do is type the word newsletter in there. So um, one of the things uh, we've been working on is Dee's recipe book, and I'm uh, busily proofing recipes and and uh, loading pictures and sending everything over to the designer. And so um, I've been looking at a lot of these great recipes that are, that are all um, – you know, just complete meals for phase one. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Dee? Sure. So our next release of a recipe collection is actually 50 recipes that contain eight ounces of protein and two cups of vegetables. So every recipe is designed to be a complete meal or you can divide that recipe in two and have it, you know, half for lunch, half for supper, share with family members. All recipes can be doubled, tripled, quadrupled, those types of things. And every single recipe is actually adaptable right from phase one all the way through maintenance. So you don't have to be just an ideal protein phase one dieter. You might be on a low carb, low sugar plan, just looking for some meal ideas. We have some vegetarian recipes. We have pork recipes, chicken recipes, steak recipes, fish recipes. Um, we're trying to reach out and cover a little bit of 
all genres to help you through and maybe just to give you some different ideas. And I see a lot of comments all the time about just keep it simple. And really the recipes are simple, but they're presented to you in a little bit different ways with maybe some herbs or spices or combinations that you haven't thought about. Um, so it's still keeping it simple, but adding a little bit of variety to your daily meals. I love that. So um, we'll be we'll get, be giving you more information on that soon. All right, you guys. Um, let's take Joelle down here. <laughs> so um, I love this picture, D, and I love a good steak salad. If you mm -hmm. love a good steak salad, give us a hashtag love or or a heart or a thumbs up emoji because um, this looks delicious and and this is also something let's talk a little bit in this show today too about ways to order in restaurants because steak salad is one of those things that um, is easy to order in a restaurant and um, delicious and and so uh, let's talk about that Dee. Sure. Um you know, steak, if you like beef and you don't have um, trouble processing beef, is an excellent source of protein, vitamins, and minerals. Um, one thing you need to know about all your food consumption, because um, we see a lot of comments about it almost daily, is that we will see clients say, well, I don't eat red meat because um, I have a weigh-in tomorrow. So I just ate chicken. Well, I'm going to tell you it doesn't matter if you eat beef, chicken, pork, fish, um, that food isn't processed and through your body by the next day at weigh-in. Um, so I don't, it takes about 48 hours for that food to be digested and move through your system. Um, and you, you can do a little bit more homework on that. Um, but if you don't have food allergies, you may have preferences. Please don't be scared of using um, all kinds of protein sources for your option. Keep your body guessing and really enjoy the food that you're eating. Steak is also one of the easiest protein items to order in a restaurant because you can actually tell your sor server that you would like nothing on it or you may specifically ask them what steak spice they use, but it's a really easy one to pop those questions. Is it marinated in something? Do you give it a butter bath? Are you giving it an oil bath? Did you take that AAA grade sirloin, you know, and cut it out of a plastic bag where, where it's been pre-marinating? These are, these are some questions um, that you can learn to, you know keep in your pocket of ways to talk around but if they say heck no you know we grill our steaks right from bear you know age this many days then you can control you know you can tell ask to have your oil served on the side you can ask to have salt and pepper or additional seasoning served to you on the side um all those types of things um so whether you're ordering steak as a meal or steak on your salad all of those things um they're really the same. Same dish, one is just combined, one is not. So don't be scared to ask those questions when it comes to things like steak. They're really good about asking you, you know, do you like blue rare, rare, medium rare, well done, all those kinds of things. So just get really comfortable um, in your um, food language. Mm -hmm. All right, well, so tell us uh, like all the different combinations of things you love to throw in your steak salad. Well, I so for me, of course, you can you can see the colored peppers, the radish, the lettuce, the cucumbers, all staples for me. Um, but one thing that I really wanted to, to touch on was how you dress a steak salad. Um, you don't need to marinate steak for it to be amazing. You can, um, but the same type of seasonings that you would put um, in a marinade, you can actually just make as a salad dressing and then finish your steak and salad with a dressing versus marinating or even seasoning that steak while you're grilling it. So um, top chefs around the world, um, they are divided on the great spice debate. So a lot will tell you there's no need um, to 
season your steak until the finish because it's just all lost or burnt off in the grilling process, which makes perfect sense. Um, so you just add it to the finish while the while your meat is resting for a few minutes before you serve. And I have found that this is truly my favorite way to season steak now. So in the picture, or so the seasoning that you see in the picture, it's actually unseasoned steak grilled to that one got actually a little bit overdone for my liking um so hence that's actually why it ended up in this salad guys um it was more palatable to me with the other veggies than it was on their own um and this one has lemon juice olive oil fresh garlic some brag soy aminos it has italian seasoning and that italian seasoning is all the italian herbs in one bottle nothing else so really easy and accessible pepper salt some red pepper flakes and some fresh chopped parsley um so just whipped up into a dressing and then drizzled over everything so really simple dressing to make really fresh and um, so today that is actually something that you're going to see a theme in every one of these salads it's the ability to have the ingredients on hand to whip up fresh, tasty dressings um, that can really make um, your salads pop. And often you just have one, maybe one to two different herbs or spices or ingredients in each dressing, but it changes it dramatically. I totally agree. Um, you know, what, one of the things I think that was really instrumental for me um, with the Ideal Protein Protocol was I got away from eating all of those dressings and I was just a huge, huge dressing person. And, and you know, that's the one thing I really see a lot of people posting about is what's your favorite dressing? What can you, you know, make dressing with? I need dressing, dressing, dressing. And when you yes. start dressing your salads with just olive oil and ground pepper and a little bit of, um, you know, uh, pink Himalayan sea salt, um, and and maybe you want to just use a little, you know, make a little uh, dressing with some minced garlic and a little bit of Dijon mustard. And it is really interesting how simple they taste. And pretty soon, you know, I was like the big blue cheese person, the big, you know, I had to have cheese on everything. I had to have blue cheese dressing or ranch dressing on everything. And I just don't need that any longer. So um, I love, I love, love, love all of that. So let's say hi to a couple more people. Um, Deb says she loves summer salads. Hey, Deb, how are you? Hi, Deb. And uh, Melissa gives us the emoji. And um, Deb says, um, sounds great, mouth watering. And um, yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I love a good salad. Um, so tell us what you got going here with the broccoli, D. Oh, this is so good, guys. <laughs> so easy, so good, so simple. So this is a broccoli and chayote salad with a Dijon mustard dressing. And it's raw broccoli, it is raw chayote. You don't have to blanch, cook, steam, anything. You're simply washing um, broccoli I chopped into small bite-sized pieces because that's just my preference. And the chayote is grated with the large side of a box grater. Red onion um, rounds out the vegetables in it. It's that simple for those three. And then we make a Dijon mustard dressing. And so again, we're, we're using the same base. So we're using the vinegar and the lemon and the olive oil. Um, really good, um, Renee can talk and attest to this, having a really good um, olive oil or extra virgin olive oil, um, it is really a fantastic thing to have in your arsenal for designing dressings. And it's something that your palate can get used to because through phase four, um, it's gonna be one of your healthy oils, that um, healthy fats, sorry. Um, that you can add into your everyday menu. It adds so much flavor to finished dishes and especially cold salads. Um, so Dijon mustard, just a touch of the sugar-free maple syrup, um, of course, garlic and salt and pepper. So again, another really, really simple one. We're kind of doing a little bit of like a uh, so if you're buying a bottle dressing, you're going to see it like a honey Dijon, but we just made it a maple Dijon. Um, and on that note, that is actually something that I really want to talk about too. So when we see people talking about what's your favorite dressing, what should I buy? If you're buying full fat dressing, 
you're really just buying olive oil with herbs and spices in a bottle if you're buying good quality ones. Otherwise, you're buying synthetic oils that you shouldn't have um, in your body, maybe, my opinion only, but check a look at some of the labels on what's actually in some of those dressings. And then sugar-free salad dressings, guys, it's water. It's water with sweetener and spices. And so you can do that at home <laughs> so easily. Um, and so, you know, this is what I want to help um, you achieve is just by changing up your seasonings and your spices. And some days you might have fresh herbs on hand and some days you might only have dry, but that's totally okay. They, the flavor comes out in both. So mm -hmm. that, that, that's totally true because um, what was that, that thing that came in the, the seasoning packet and then you used to uh, put it in with some vinegar and, and some oil um, I forget what that was. My mom used to make it all the time. Oh. It, it was delicious and she would keep it in, in the uh, refrigerator. I don't know if, if you know what I'm talking about, but, uh, well, they still make many of those. Like you, they still make many of those salad dressing packets. Um, I can see the hills and the trees and the ranch. Um, yeah, but me yeah, too. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they still make those. <laughs> That's yeah. Cool. yeah so you know just just being creative with uh all of your your spaces so mm -hmm. i'm i'm a lover of broccoli and mm -hmm. um you know one of the things that i like to do with a lot of my salads and and if you're in phase one and and you're trying to not only um get your salad in but maybe um get some of your ideal protein in I like to crunch up my chips on there. So I'll add my nacho cheese chips to pretty much anything. And um, then I will also um, put some of the nuts on there, like the spicy chips on there and uh, different things like that. So yeah. Can you, can, you see, can you see the trail mix on there? Is that on there? I thought yeah. it was. It's oh, good. Like, All right. <laughs> <laughs> and there's actually one more um, seasoning on there that does cause a little online controversy. So I'm not going to give my opinion either way, but so maintenance. Um, there is also the um, uh, yeast, the nutritional yeast yeah. um, sprinkled on there as well. Um, you can kind of see it gives that little bit of yellow cast. Okay. You know, the, and, and that's what that is too. So. So um, nutritional yeah. yeast is one of those things that you need to run by your coach. It's yeah. fine in my clinic. It's it's 10 calories. It's all basically vitamins in there. Um, but you need to run that by your coach. So we're not we're not here to coach people. Um, Joelle yeah. says the name of that spice was good seasonings, and you're absolutely right. Thanks so much um, for <laughs> for sharing that. Um, love 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 that. That's awesome. um, oh, Okay, so again, if you guys are jumping on here, uh, give us a hashtag live, tell us where you're from, tell us what your favorite salad combinations are. And um, I know that, you know, everybody, well, not everybody, but most people love a good egg salad. And um, we get really caught up in our old traditions of throwing tons of mayonnaise in there and, you know, uh, lots of gooey stuff. But, you know, you can actually make an amazing egg salad with, with a lot of different things. So tell us about this one, Dee. You have the turmeric and curry picture up. Oh. Oops. Okay. okay. Well, let's change That's that okay. then, and um, I'll just good. change my title. How about that? You're good. You're all good. <laughs> so it's all good. It's all because this one does have eggs in it too. And why I chose to use this one, guys? I actually does anybody recognize in the corner of the picture where the base salad of this comes from? Anybody? Anybody? No. Do you recognize oh, that cardboard? <laughs> do you recognize? Do you recognize that cardboard box? Where can you go get a buffet of salad in a cardboard box? Uh, Whole Foods. Whole Foods. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so one day I had the most scrumptious vegetable melody from Whole Foods, and I had put tofu and a hard uh, the couple of hard boiled eggs that you see on there for a complete meal, and I had sprinkled turmeric and curry on it, both of those seasonings with some evo and some salt and pepper and it was one of the best salads that i ever ate 
honestly. And so I went home and wrote up a little <laughs> salad dressing recipe because the turmeric and curry were so good together um, that I just had to do it. So again, some apple cider vinegar, you can use lemon or lime. I love fresh ginger in this one as well with the turmeric and curry. Uh, if you don't like one or the other, just leave it out, honestly. Like if you say, oh, I love turmeric, but I don't love curry, or the other way around. Um, of course, fresh pressed garlic clove. So I always um, put my garlic through a press um, so that it, it really disperses evenly. So there's not great big chunks of it. It's just the texture that I prefer. Um, salt and pepper um, to taste and it's awesome. Really awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I put I put those kinds of spices on a lot of my dishes, whether it yeah. is, um, you know, a good stir fry. Um, I, I use turmeric um, with uh, tofu a lot. And basically curry powder has turmeric in it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so that that looks fabulous. All right. This now I, I'm sure this is the Caesar salad, right? <laughs> it is. It is. That is my phase one Caesar salad. So if you are in phase one, you can still make this salad. And the croutons that you see are the artisan bread um, cubed. And then you can pan dry them or bake them in the oven to make nice crispy little bits. And traditional romaine with, um, of course, um, real lemon. And it is um, garlic cloves. And I did use the Walden Farms Amazing Mayo um, because I add the Dijon mustard and the vinegar and the olive oil and the real garlic and the salt and pepper. And I blend the dressing until smooth. Now, I use a lot of garlic um, when I make a Caesar dressing, but you can pull back on that and half of it and half it or um, items like that. And then I also um, sometimes just add a little smidge of water as I'm blending my dressing, um, just to make it go a little bit further um, to thin it out. Because um, this one I only dress right before I'm ready to eat the Caesar salad. So toss it and um, then it gets all the leaves coated. And you don't need a thick dressing that absolutely is mud sliding over every leaf. You just need a little glaze of flavor um, and you're good to go. So this is, this is um, it's a really simple dressing to make. Fresh Caesar dressing is, is um, awesome if you are somebody who likes to make your own homemade mayo, that you could simply do that and sub it for the amazing mayo. Um, but I really don't mind the amazing mayo when it is used in conjunction with other herbs and spices. Um, it's, it's a decent vehicle. Um, to make dressings. So that is my Caesar salad. Okay, so if any of you have um, made D's artisan bread, or just artisan bread, whether you made it into croutons or not, give us a hashtag uh, <laughs> smiley face because, um, you know, the one thing that I think is amazing that uh, D has really shared a lot of her recipes that you can bake with. And if you don't have her baking book yet, you can download it at dsrecipes.com. And um, you can, you know, there's tons and tons of recipes. There's about 50 different recipes um, that are breads and muffins and uh cookies and and all of those things that you need and and of course you know a lot of them are made with the phase one packets yeah. which is okay um but uh you know there's there's nothing like a good um you know when when you're when you're needing some bread uh mm -hmm. head over there download the ebook and um you know it, it really is it, it's a game changer you guys Remember that if you are interested in any of these recipes, they come out every Monday. And um, all you have to do is type in the word newsletter. It's a two-step process, so make sure you say yes, and then you click the newsletter um, in the second uh, link. So that's gonna come into your Facebook Messenger. All right, Dee, um, this looks like the Che Oti, is that right? 
Uh, this is our, it's like our beef in spring mix with the Greek dressing. <laughs> I am completely losing it today. It's all good. It's, all, it's really hard because so many of them um, have ingredients that you can uh, really interchange. But th these types of salad in um, this picture, um, I really want to talk about this because when we talk about needing fast, simple, easy meal ideas, um, in your meal planning and prep, I think everybody should scramble fry some type of a ground meat, whether it's ground chicken breast, ground turkey breast, um, ground extra lean beef, or a combination of a few, um, and have them measured out into four or eight ounce servings, whatever you like. Um, if you're a protein splitter and you need, you know, want four ounces at lunch or three ounces at lunch on a salad, it's perfect. It's easy. Um, Pre-cook them. Have them ready to go in whatever kind of serving portions you like. You reheat them um, with your chosen spices um, and you have an instant meal um, when you have some lettuce, any type of lettuce um, and vegetables. Um, and there's so many options out there. So this one is simply a spring mix with cucumbers and a Greek dressing. Now, we tend to think of Greek miniature or as a Mediterranean dressing, and you usually see that on chicken or fish, but it is amazing with beef also. So most of you are familiar with the iconic Big Mac in a bowl salad. Just push that one further. So think of any other flavor combinations that you might be missing. And Add them to your ground turkey, beef, or chicken. Um, add the veggies that you want and the spices that you want. And so for a Mediterranean salad dressing, again, it's really simple. Fresh or dried oregano. Um, this one has a little bit of dill. Um, so that's my flavor changer in a traditional Greek um, salad recipe. So a little bit less oil than traditional Greek salad as well. Um, Lots of salt and pepper, vinegar, lemon, oregano. I was a little bit heavy handed on the oregano, but I really like that. I like that flavor to come through. Um, and even though it's ground beef, you are full, but you don't feel heavy after eating this type of a salad as a meal. Um, that's the beautiful part about it. And really easy to meet your vegetable goals that way too in your day. Um, so, of course, lettuce, if you are on the phase one um, protocol, then you can count it as unlimited or you can count it towards your um, select vegetable count for the day. So, again, if you're a hungry person or just having a hungry day or just maybe in your first week, don't be scared to put that lettuce. Um, you know, I love to recommend to our, our protocol users to have two small salads every day on top of their four cups of vegetables, especially if they tell me that they're they're hungry. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, after the first three, uh, four or five days, um, when you're in a ketogenic state, you sh you really shouldn't be hungry. If you are hungry, you should be looking for what maybe is slipping in that probably shouldn't be there. That's causing you not to be in ketosis and uh, <laughs> keeping you from, you know, really uh, getting into that fat burning mode. And, and we can talk about that too. At some point, if yeah. you have questions on ketosis, post them in the comments section. So I always save my favorite picture for last. This looks like some kind of um, this is tacos or something to me. <laughs> so this is actually I'm, the I'm egg totally salad. Off base today, so tell us what this is. <laughs> this is actually the egg salad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but what is it like? I, is, is this egg salad on pitas? Th that's on egg salad on the ideal protein chicken soup pitas. Yep. You betcha. So I actually have another picture where I make this as an egg salad dash salad. Um, so it's tossed with romaine as well um, for a, like, like, like a bucket of, of vegetables is what I like to call it. Um, but I, I actually wanted to show you the pita option too because um, I've been making wraps and, and uh, breads and things like that since 2011 with 
the ideal protein packs. But the chicken soup is one of my most favorites um, to do that. And paired with um, egg salad, it is delicious. And you don't have to put any extra ingredients into it. You can, a little bit of egg white and water, just make some nice flat rounds in your skillet or bake it in the oven and then assemble your egg salad. Um, and so in my egg salad, I love tons of diced green onion, fine diced green onion, fine diced celery, fine diced cucumber, I use a little bit of amazing mayo, Dijon mustard, salt, pepper. Sometimes I use, excuse me, fresh dill if I have it. Um, and then, so if I'm doing wraps or if I'm eating it just as a salad, um, sorry, if I'm doing wraps, I tend to leave out my romaine um, just because of the volume. But if I want to eat it just as a salad, then I also add um, the chopped romaine as additional in there and have a full meal. Um, the great thing is too, Again, you can eat your full, you know, you need um, six eggs on protocol, four must be whole, two to four must be whole, the remainders are whites. Um, and I'm so I'm a person who would use the four whole plus two whites. So it builds a big, beautiful egg salad. And it is enough volume that you can easily divide that in half, enjoy some at lunch, and again, at supper time. So it really you can really create two full meals at lunchtime and especially in conjunction with the packets that you need to get in for the day and all the water um get in, in there a day you're enjoying that with your branch chain amino acids or your water in hand um you've got a lot of so between all the food we can feed you and your water consumption we should be keeping you nice and full for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so um, one thing that I, I thought, you know, uh, I've made the pitas and, um, you know, they're just like making a pancake. Do you need to add any like baking powder or anything? So you can make this with any soup recipe. Um, but uh, tell us a, a little bit about like, how do you bake them? Like, I've never heard of that. <laughs> so if you want to bake them, you use less water in egg white and you make your batter like really thick pancake batter. That's the best way that I can describe it. Like think of waffle batter or really, so when you pour it, it's really, it's going to stay once you pour it on the parchment paper. If you want to thin it out and make more, well then I suggest doing it in the skillets and then you can make a lot of thin um, rounds and you can either make them nice and soft or you can cook them until they're crispy as well. So lots of variation. So, you know, if you came to me and you said, look, I'm, I can't get through, you know, I can't get between lunch and supper and don't tell me to use my pack in the middle of the day because I need it for after supper. Then I'm going to start giving you ideas and ways to start bulking up that lunchtime meal. And these are ways to do it. So taking a single packet, but stretching it into more volume of food. And sometimes, you know, so say if you ate a bowl of the chicken soup, you know, and you just had like a little bowl, like whether, you know, with a cup of water in it and you made your soup or you made six tortilla wraps and filled it with your veggies. Um, both are going to satisfy you, but you're also going to be visually satisfied and actually have more volume once they're made into a, a wrap. So another tip is if you're going to use an egg white and some water to make your wraps, you're just going to not use an egg white in your egg salad. It's, it's so simple, right? So when you're saying like, well, how do I design this? How do I count it? Or, you know, maybe you're going to use two egg whites and a little bit of water in with your chicken soup to make your rounds. And then you're going to use four whole eggs to make your salad. So lots of, cus again, lots of customizable ways to, to make your, your wraps. And you can add fresh herbs or dried herbs into that soup as well. Um, pepper, fresh cracked pepper, add a lot of flavor to it. So we really want to teach you that you can really, really enjoy the taste of your food and not, and not feel deprived. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a really good, um, word. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit, um, just kind of like the end of our show and, um, 
just before we get to that, Joelle says um, you can make the mixture as a waffle and put the egg salad on top too. Yeah, you can. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> um, let's talk about the word that is deprived. So um, why do you go on a program, you make that choice, um, you want to lose weight, you want to change your lifestyle, you want to stop feeling crappy, you want to stop looking in the mirror and beating yourself up. Um, let's talk about the word deprived. Give us your <laughs> thoughts, Dee. That's, you know, I think it's a tough one without pinging a nerve, um, maybe with a lot of people that that may be viewing. Um, there's different stages. You know, when we commit to the, a program such as the Ideal Protein, we are really gung ho. We are in our, you know, we say, I'm committed, I'm ready, I'm gonna do this. You know, we have, maybe you start out and we have some great success, um, but then maybe we get some bad advice from a friend or something, and then we start to try to tweak it because, well, it worked for them, so it should work for me, or then you go somewhere and somebody's eating something that got you to where you are in the first place, but all of a sudden you're feeling sorry for yourself because you can't eat it, and you've already lost sight or focus on why you started in the first place. And it takes a lot of practice, it takes a lot of talking, and it takes a lot of preparing and planning and really practicing self-discipline. It really, really does in deciding what's more important. I don't feel like anybody should feel deprived on the program um, because we really work very, very hard to, to give you really good food options, whole food options. And these are the kind of options that you should be practicing, like your protein and vegetables that you're eating every day, you should be eating that for the rest of your life. When you're done losing the weight, you know, your healthy fats um, and carbs, if you so choose to bring them back in, um, you're probably always going to have to be mindful. It doesn't mean you can't ever have them, but you're going to become mindful. But if you're always feeling that, if this is a punishment or a deprivation, um, it's going to be a really, it's going to, it's going to be a struggle um, for you. And so we, <laughs> there is a lot of support out there. There's a lot of good reading material. We have a, a Wendy White Stevens started the Ideal Protein Book Club. You're all welcome to go over and join in there where there is a lot of discussion on uh, Dr. Tran, who created this protocol, um, lots of good information in there. Right now they are um, starting the emotional EQ. There is a lot of emotion attached to our eating and our food choices. And sometimes um, many of you may recognize you eat different at home than you do in a public setting or with family or with certain people, or maybe people really Maybe you do cave into peer pressure. Um, you know, I, you know, I, I even had the experience where I had a client whose, you know, kids demanded that she serve Chinese food for Christmas um, when she's trying to be on a healthy protocol. And um, so, you know, learning to have a voice for yourself saying, well, maybe, you know, maybe next year, but this year that's just not going to work for me. So we're going to do a different meal plan. You know, it's, it takes practice and sometimes it takes talking it, taking, talking it through, I guess. Does that make sense, Renee? Um, mm -hmm. you, know, you don't have to become an expert at everything overnight either. Um, in the journey of learning how to navigate what is best for you. But learning the language um, of promoting yourself can be really tough because most of us have not done it or learned how to do it um, because we feel that we're letting somebody down, right? Or we're ruining the fun or, you know, um, I always like to refer back to, you know, when friends are telling you that this little bit won't hurt, um, lots of people are very private. They don't want people to know that they're on a health journey. But sometimes they need to know so that they can stop badgering you or hindering you or trying to talk you into not reaching your health goals. So if you had a loved one who all of a sudden became a type 1 diabetic, you're not going to be pushing 
cakes and candies and garbage in their face. You know, if your loved one had a massive heart attack and was on the road to recovery and had a strict, you know, eating and physio and, you know, regime that they had to partake in, you're not going to show up there with a bag of greasy fries and a burger and say, here, bud, you know, see if we can trigger another one. You're not. And so there's not anyone in in your life there really isn't anyone in your life who should have an opinion on what what you're trying to do for your body there there's no one that except you and um we can't talk about that enough you you have to explain to no one um why you're making the choices that you're making um and it's hard, but it's, you know, it's it's something to talk about. It's something to learn the language. Um, if anybody who's on here watching, you know, what is the best um, response that y- you guys have for, um, you know, did you feel deprived while you were, once you were in the swing of th- things? Because um, I'm telling you, if you're in clean ketosis, you're not hungry. Your body does not know that you are not physically feeding it because it is truly living off your fat stores and I know that it, it's it's a really uneloquent way to put it but that is how it is if you are in clean ketosis your body's happy it is mowing through those fat stores of yours and getting every single thing that it needs so That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, so true hunger and psychological hunger are very two different things and So before everybody jumps on me for that, we all are created differently. Um, I don't, I I cringe when I see posts about, well, I'm five foot four. How much should I weigh? Nobody knows how much you should weigh if you're five foot four, because we don't know what your lean mass amount is. We don't know what your fat stores is. We don't know what your frame is. That is all indicative to you. That's a conversation between you and your coach. You need to learn where a healthy range is for your exact body type is, and it doesn't equal out a pound number. Sorry, guys, it just doesn't. Um, So please stop um, focusing on pounds on the scale. Um, I hope you've all seen the graphics of three women lined up side by side, and they all weigh the same, and they're all drastically different sizes. So I want you to just stop that one too. Um, Don't compare yourself to anybody else's. number and really start honing in on these on the non-scale victories so by the end of week one maybe week one really was rough for you like you know what your body's going through a, a drastic change taking away your um we're taking away your drug dependency and that's sugar it is if sugar and carbs is the worst drug out there maybe it was a rough patch soon as you start feeling a little bit better you know what are you experiencing are your rings fitting? Is your face less puffy? Are your fingers less puffy? How about your ankles, your knees, your hips, your joints? Can you move up and down those stairs? Is your breathing better? Um, are you are you sleeping better? Um, you know, they're baby steps. Um, and I I know I'm kind of rambling right now, but you know, we there we had an awesome story. You know, we had a client that the goal was to get off the couch every day. 10 times that day. And then the goal was you're going to make it out to your front step. And then the next goal was you're going to make it to the end of your sidewalk. And then you're going to make it down to the end of your block. And then you're going to make it down to your mailbox. And a year later, when over 100 pounds came up off that, you know, that client could walk full flights of stairs. So whether you have 10, and you're going to break that down into what every pound of a baby step is, or whether it's 100 or more, start looking at those little life-changing things that are going to accumulate into an entirely new lifestyle. It's so important. So important. I, you know, I, I love all those tips, um, uh, you know, and, and it's not about rambling. Um, you and I both have, have worked with hundreds of clients and um, everybody's story is different. And um, I, I think the biggest thing that I try to portray to my clients is to be kind to themselves, yeah. take it one day at a time. And there is no... Uh, journey, no matter if it's weight loss, whether it's career, emotions, um, life change, self change, whatever, whatever it is, 
there's no journey that looks just like this, right? So yeah. it's it's that, you know, little step by step as as we continue to, you know, just get a little bit better and a little bit better and um, we we become comfortable with our ourselves and with each change and maybe each change takes a month three months yeah. six months to make that change just like um it's just it's a part of us right yeah. um where, where i look back on when i you know lost my 65 pounds the the first 30 pounds you know i did just a liquid diet and um then it took me forever to you know stabilize my body i didn't even understand the stabilization phase and then it took me another like 14 years to get rid of the other 35 pounds because I just kept trying different things and and you know maybe one thing would take 10 pounds off or five pounds off or or you know then I had a baby and then I gained it all back and you know so it, it's a long journey and and it's a lifestyle journey it's it's a lifetime of, of making choices and um, now it's easy for me to make those choices because I, I don't say I can't have something. I just don't. That's not even interesting to me. I just yeah. don't eat that, or you know, I know what the the outcome yeah. is going to be for me. So, um, and and I have a good time everywhere I go. D can D can attest to. I like to have a good time. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So, right. anyway, we've uh, we've far surpassed our thirty we're, minutes. We're far over, yeah. Yeah. We're, uh, you know, we're always happy to answer questions and we love this part of the show. Not only do we love to share recipes, but but to inspire others to keep keep going, keep looking for that, you know, rhythm that you get in life to where you and it's never easy. There's never an easy time, you know, whether it's hormones or menopause or thyroid or stress or 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 there's always mm -hmm. an excuse to you know overeat and zip back up that scale um so you know i always say there's only one thing i can control and that's right here so um yeah. you know, the other, the other, my other, my other one that this has been really popular lately, and I, and I, and I'm going to be really honest with you all. I have keyboard restraint happening because every time somebody types in a comment on a support page, I only lost 10 pounds this month. I, you guys, really make me want to go bang my head off of a wall because I'm like, why don't you change it to? Oh, I only gained 10 pounds this month. What if you gained 10 pounds every month? Like, think about how fast you're changing your body. I only lost 10 pounds. You know, that's amazing. I Like, I, I just, I, I, I don't know any other way where you get to keep your muscles and lose up to 10 pounds a month. Um, but I always think of it the other way. Like, do you gain 10 pounds a month? You know, could you? Could you gain 10 pounds a month? Yeah. Yeah, I, I really to, really you know, lose right. 50 pounds and come back in six months later and they've they've gained one pound a week. Right. For six months and boom, it's it's you know, yeah. it's twenty five pounds. So great. Yes. So, yes. Celebrate every little yes. half a pound, quarter pound, one yeah. pound. <laughs> Change your perspective around. Like, you know what? I don't care. I don't care if you get on the scale naked after you pee first thing in the morning and go, Yeah, I am down a quarter of a pound. I don't care. Like that's awesome. Like start looking at the awesome things, you know? And you know what? If you drink eight liters of water that day and at the end of the day you stepped on the scale and you text me in a panic going oh my god i weigh two more pounds tonight what did you eat what did you drink step back on your scale in the morning see if it's gone we need to stop you know just yeah, yeah. hyper focusing yeah. stop hyper focusing yeah. and just 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 focus on the journey just focus on the yeah. health yeah <laughs> totally agree <laughs> with you, <babe. laughs> so okay, everybody Thank word. you for joining us. As always, we uh, we will be back next week. What what are we doing next week, Dee? 
I think we're going to do so a shout out. I don't know if she's on here today, but a shout out to um, our followers in Halifax, Nova oh, Scotia. Right. So in a few short hours, I'm going to be boarding a plane to Halifax. And I have the names and addresses of some fresh fishmongers because if you all look on the map where Halifax, Nova Scotia is, it is right on the ocean. Um, it is where tons of people came from all over the world on boats to land in Canada. It's really cool. There's some really cool history here. And so I think we're going to do a seafood show next week, Renee. I love it. I love it. So, uh, yeah, join us for seafood next week. We will see you then. Exciting stuff, you guys. Okay, everybody. See you soon.